Welcome back to That's Entertainment, our thrilling weekly show where we occasionally dive off into the weeds and go and start asking questions around the industry. Today we have Daniel Brock, who was the founder and originator of Everyman Media Group. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Back in the day, don't forget that we were, when I started, we were receiving film cans on a Thursday night, you know, dropped off in a van, you know, sort of pieced together or sellotaped together by the projectionist the next day, you know, shown for a week, taken apart the next Thursday night, picked up by a van, taken to another cinema. At that time, when I first started, around us was Odeon and um, was it View then? Maybe View then as well. Um, but basically what they used to do, I mean, this was all, you know, not not sort of documented. It was basically you know, understood if you gave a print to, um, in our case, Odeon Swiss Cottage, um, no one within a certain radius got a print. So you, you you find, you know, a rep cinema, so in repetition. So no first run films, right? So second run films. But the problem is that those films, you know, where if you were available too readily in the home video market. Right. Because they're already in circulation, right? They come out, the, they're, they're no longer in the cinema window. They're now in the home market. Um, so people could see them, but some people used to go and like going to see them at the cinema. But by some people, I mean not enough people. So, so what we were forced to do is start to think, well, you know, where is, if you, if you, start, if you step back and start again, where's the opportunity here? Um, and it sort of seems obvious now, but at the time we managed to find, well, what about if we just concentrate on the customer? But every man as a company has never left that actually. Mm. It's, just, it's just always been there. So therefore today it is by far the best customer experience in cinema in the UK. And, you know, in any meaningful way, maybe, you know, in a lot of the world, it just took us down this route of, you know, how can we become very, very customer centric? Let's create a space where people will come regardless of what's on. We did the other criminal thing in cinema. cinema. So I was already regarded as completely mad. Um, and, then I, and then I said, we're going to take seats out. Now that was, you know, I could have, I mean, there was no bigger sin to create, to, to commit than that in cinema. They were like, what do you mean take seats out? Right. Take seats out? I mean, we need more seats. I was like, no, we need less seats. Um, with because the thing, because the rationale was right. So if we we had 120 seats, was it 120 something like that? 120 seats in this in this auditorium, um, and I said, well let, let's let's get it down to 80 because there's never more than 70 people in there. So do you want 70 people at five pounds or 70 people at ten pounds? I wasn't a cinema goer or a film lover, um, and which turned out to be my superpower actually. Um, because all I thought of, what would make me want to come here and hang out? So we talked about it in terms of like a club environment. And then the thing that really elevated us, because we were in Hampstead, this would be unique to a Hampstead situation, is we managed to tap into a, quite a few high profile names that decided to do the same thing. Um, you know, and that that sort of spr sprinkled a little stardust on the whole thing. And then, you know, the other thing that started to happen was technology. <laughs> And that sort of ultimately saved us um, because digital delivery and projection democratized film and removed the thing I told you about at the beginning, removed the monopoly. A woman called Romaine Hart is now not with us. She had a great reputation, you know, hard, hard ass, you know, sort of cinema owning woman, family business, that type of stuff. Um, and then she, she ran a thing called the Screen Group she was getting old she decided to sell and we saw, and we bought them my experience of cinema as an industry is it's very 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 weak on innovation yeah um you know we happen to become innovators because we weren't cinema people because most cinemas have cobbled together of different you know circuits mm. um so different standards of buildings different sort of you know layouts physical yeah. experience you know you um whereas if you go into an every the minute you walk up the door, you know you're in everything. And then, and then the whole sort of, 
you know, but we'll stick in some VIP screens and that will do it. No, it won't. Because, because, you know, as a mate of mine used to say, you, you, try, you starve a cart horse into a racehorse and you get a half-starved cart horse. It's, it's a very difficult thing to, to amalgamate these sort of, you know, upscale experiences in essentially a downscale by comparison um, location and venue. Whereas, whereas every man is, because we've only ever been that, that's what it is. But, you know, I, the, the drive in, in cinema in any business is basically technological innovation, and they're slow on that. So that will mean fewer, for the consumer, fewer venues, but a, the whole experience will, will be upped. Right. Yeah. So, so I think for cinema, it's all about experience, customer experience. It's all about, you know, I mean, we, we were the first people really, I think even the first, maybe one of the first, possibly the first, to put um, sofas into cinemas, mm. as an example. And I remember I said, listen, let's put sofas in. The, the guys went, what do you mean sofas? Yeah, sofas. No one wants to sit on the sofa. <laughs> Why not? You sit on the sofa at home. Yeah, that's at home. In the cinema, you want to be in a seat. I said, but really? <laughs> Um, and, um, and we, and we created the thing going back to the, the actual catalyst of every man was actually, we had a basement area in the Hampstead venue and we, we, we opened a second, we didn't know what to do with this space, looking at a bar, this, that, and the other, but because we started to get traction, we set up this new, what we now called screening lounges. We, we created this space in the basement, which broke every rule of cinema, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Screen too small, no ceiling height. Um, you know, 70 i think 70 72 seats um so small in number i was thinking about screening rooms in in um film companies distributors in in london right so these were the places that everyone wanted to go i said well let's just do that and this couple came in sort of yeah mid late 30s something like that and i saw her because it's all about her so we always said everyone was a female concept um you know sort of walk around he just trailed behind waiting to be able to sit down um and um and she looked this sofa and she sort of got in front of it sat down looked around took her shoes off and put her feet up next to him once once you gave the the woman a way to sell the idea to the husband they just came along fell asleep whatever didn't matter um that's what i mean about a female-led concept so that that night was significant for what she did, but also who they were. It wasn't about the film, mm -hmm. about going out. And were you going to go and sit in a pub? The guy would say yes. The girl would say less yes. So I was just looking for that sort of easy way, like, listen, it's Thursday night. Let's go out. We'll go to every man, you know, something to eat, something to drink, watch a great film, sit down for two and a half hours, don't have to talk to each other, come back. Perfect. Fundamentally, I always think cinema is undervalued. When you race to the bottom on price, which is what cinemas do, were doing, well, still do. I just saw one the other day, actually, you know, three pounds on a Saturday. You know, can't, you know I mean, what is the point of that? You know, that, but when you've got nothing left to do, that's what you're going to do. And what happened is, is it devalued the experience in the customer's eyes. So therefore, it became about price. So therefore, if you were, if you were charging a bit more, that had a, that was a problem in terms of price right early on when I took over every man, you know, being the sort of the heathen I was, I remember I got this letter from this guy cause we stopped doing matinees and he gave me this, I got this whole, you know, handwritten letter, how it was disgraceful. How would I do that? He's been coming to matinees with the every man for the past 300 years and blah, blah, blah. And it's what he does at two 30 on a Wednesday. And how could I stop it? Um, and um, and I wrote back, I said, no problem. Turn up next Wednesday at 2.30 with 184 friends and we'll let you in. <laughs> Didn't hear from him again. <laughs> Funnily enough. Funnily enough. Well, Daniel, that was a real pleasure. Uh, you know, we've done a few interviews now, but that was definitely the most fun. 